Hello everyone, my name is Pixarifs and welcome back to the apocalypse! <laughs> I have no idea what's going on with the sky right now. I think I may have tabbed out of the program while it was loading the shader. I came back and it's doing this. Uh, so bear with me while I correct this obvious technical malfunction. It's it's kind of pretty though, gotta be honest with you. There we go. Ah, oh good to see that the sky isn't actually falling in rainbow colors. Welcome back! To Minecraft RTX Survival, of course. <laughs> Where else does the sky become a maelstrom of colour? And of course, we have a maelstrom of colour down here in the storage system that we built in the last episode, where I've been slowly but surely moving all of my items over here. I am keeping a little bit of stuff in the house though, namely stuff like the enchanted books and armour that I've got on me right now. I'm in the process of clearing up this area outside. We're going to do a little bit of decoration today. We are potentially going to go looking for another ocean monument because I want more sea lanterns. I basically ran out of them in the last episode, if you couldn't tell, and had to replace some of the central lighting in that walkway out there with some uh, some shroom lights just to make sure that the area was well enough lit, but I still had neutral colored lights for all of the stained glass work. But aside from that, everything is working pretty well. And I was thinking today, once we head out to an ocean monument and gather some more sea lanterns, I want to make more color coded stuff. And I want to start extending that to villagers around here as well. I think having villagers in this area is going to be nice. I think it's going to be good to get some trading sorted out pretty early. And we're going to try curing some zombified villagers now that I have access to potions and I have enough gold to make a few golden apples. In fact, yeah, I'm fairly certain I have a fair few apples as well, so that's both sides of that equation pretty much sorted. Maybe we can start breeding villagers over here, it would be fairly easy to do, but I do want discounts on some of the crucial stuff villagers can provide, and so I'm going to have a go at curing some zombie villagers overnight here. First of all though, it's time to brew up some more potions of water breathing. Let's get a few of these on the go, let's make sure we have 8 minutes of duration per bottle, and then we'll go and find and clear out another ocean monument. Okay, so I managed to get myself a couple of zombie villagers cured from zombie villagers that were just wandering around here. So this guy is of course a Fletcher, he's just been through one curing stage and he's now trading us stuff at a discount. The discounts aren't as immediate as the ones are in Java edition, I think they're just not quite as good, but the idea here is that like our little storage system down there, I have a booth here that is color coded with a light underneath the villager. I was also told, by the way, that you put a bucket of water inside of here to make sure that the villager doesn't lose contact with his workstation, that he remembers that this workstation is his. I've never really seen this before and it kind of feels bad that he's just kind of like wiggling towards the back of the booth over there, but that just seems to be what everyone suggested doing to make sure he doesn't uh, deep air with his workstation, right? So thankfully we've got one Fletcher inside of there, and over here I have been painstakingly breaking and replacing this lectern in order to get ourselves a local librarian with a mending book trade. So we have mending for 22 emeralds. Now this guy was cured from a zombie villager, but from the looks of things doesn't have any discounts available yet. So what I understand is that we're going to have to basically zombify and cure him multiple times in order to get a chance of him giving us some discounts. So this might be a little bit expensive in terms of the golden apple trade. This world should be on hard difficulty though. Yep, the difficulty there is on hard. So hopefully we should be able to get this guy to uh, give us a couple of discounts as long as we can introduce him to a few zombies. So I'm going to wait for the sun to set over there, and hopefully if we can grab a couple more zombie villagers from around here, we might be able to set up a situation where they can breed. We will use this guy as our mending trader, and then I can finally put mending on those tools that don't have it, which right now, all I've got is my silk touch pickaxe and my shovel with mending. But thankfully, a little bit of villager trading should go a long way to making sure I have enough XP. And I've got a little bit of other stuff enchanted that should hopefully benefit from having mending on it. Maybe we'll even be able to repair some of this equipment. But I'm I'm in the market for a better diamond chest plate enchant. So we will see how things go. But for now, a mending trader is going to be necessary, I think, for the foreseeable future. And I'm trying to work out a color coding system for each of the different villagers professions. That guy over there has an orange. I think the librarians might be red because they typically have a book on their heads. And I'm also going to look into whether this texture pack has been updated so that the full villager outfit is 
uh, visible and so that it doesn't just have the bottom half of their robe because they have basically like the lower half of the skin it seems like but not the diamond on the belt that signifies what rank they are in their profession and obviously no like hat layer for the villager to show what profession he has from the top half and the top half is basically all we can see once we trap them in these booths so I think we need to work on that. And like clockwork, the zombie <laughs> came out here, zombified our villager friend, and then immediately he got back in the boat. So they're going on a little boating holiday right now. I'm going to sleep for the night a little way away from them and hopefully away from any creepers as well. And of course, now they're both burning in the sun. Oops. Uh, well, hopefully we can fix this by pillaring up above them and just placing a quick overhang and then maybe getting a bucket of water if they need that as well. Well, it looks like our mending villagers survived at least. Let's see if we can take care of the zombie and <laughs> there we go. That was a little bit touch and go for a second, but I think trading with them should hopefully uh, cure them a little bit of that. I mean, tra trading with villagers typically gives them the regeneration effect for a little while. So yeah, hopefully we can continue as planned and this guy should be able to return to his original set of trades. I think that's how it works. Anyway, let me quickly find that out. Assuming that's how it works anyway, and I guess we're about to find out because we can splash him with another weakness potion, feed him another golden apple, and <laughs> despite the fact that he gets a little bit aggro with me, hopefully we should find ourselves with a villager with a mending trade. Well, there we go. He's certainly taken to... Oh, yes, there we go. We got a mending trade for a single emerald. Fantastic. I'll get a few of those books, and it looks like... Everything has worked as planned. He's out of the boat, but it's going to be easy enough to get him back in that. And oh, <laughs> I did break a couple of the blocks here just because I was worried about him popping up into a solid block. But you see those pink particles around the outside? That should be regeneration. So hopefully we should be able to just tuck this guy back into a boat, transport him over to wherever we want to, and then we should be right as rain. So if we start a villager trading hall over here by my storage area, I think that's going to be a good place to start. And we should be able to line up a bunch of cured villagers there. Mending for one emerald, though. I'm so happy we've got to that extra step now. And as you can see, we have four mending books that I can use on all of my equipment here. And I should have no trouble with it from now on. Thank you very much, my friend. It's going to be great doing business with you. So now I put mending on my Fortune 3 netherite pickaxe, which is one of the priority tools, I think, for mending. I want to make sure that anything I've spent netherite on is going to stick around. So let's trade a little bit more with this guy to get some more book trades unlocked later if we can. I think he's also trading us glass, which is going to be invaluable for our building projects. Let's take a quick look at the durability on that. Well, it hasn't increased all that much, but the pickaxe did dip in our field of view there, and I think that means that the XP is going to the pickaxe, which is good news. This auto furnace setup here, though, has been my best source of XP so far. From what I understand, there is some weirdness going on with the furnaces, where when they store XP like this, it actually kind of multiplies each time. I'm not entirely sure how that works again, but it looks like we do have a decent amount of XP flowing through this, and this will probably be a really good way of repairing my tools, as long as I can keep it coming through with as much stuff as I can smelt. And I think we're probably going to set up a few farms in this area to make sure that I constantly have fuel and stuff to smelt. Maybe a decent cactus farm or a kelp farm or something like that is going to mean that we can get XP renewably this way. But obviously the sword is going to be a shoe in for adding mending to. It's only going to cost me three levels, so that's going to be nice and easy as well. And despite it having Bane of Arthropods, I think having an Unbreaking and Silk Touch Axe is going to be worth it as well. Oh, there goes my anvil. Well, at least I've got mending on a few extra things and we can work on the rest of my equipment here as well. In the meantime, I'm going to break this lectern over here, which is going to annoy this guy, but he shouldn't lose his profession now we've traded with him once. As you can see, still got the discount, still got the mending book. Perfect. What we need to do is place the workstation over there, and hopefully once we take him out of the boat here... There we go. He's going to pair with that workstation. If it's the workday, he should decide to shuffle on over to it, and that will allow us to put him in a boat once again and get him up these next two levels of terrain. <laughs> and that's the main problem right now, is just making sure we can guide him over towards where we plan on having our little villager trading station over there. So if we just nudge you in the right direction, there we go. All right, we just got to break the workstation again, and we should be able to guide him up onto this next level here. There we go, he's paired with it, he's just going to walk over there, bam, we can get him in a boat like so, and we should just be able to row him over there from here. 
Of course, rowing across land in Bedrock Edition makes for slow progress, but the wiggling of the oars is kind of worth watching just by itself. This looks adorable and hilarious. There he is in the booth, and you can clearly see the difference between these two now. This one is uplit with a red light indicating he's a librarian, and this one with the orange light, because you honestly can't tell he's a Fletcher with the exception of, I guess, the Fletching table in front of him, but hey, whatever. I like the fact that we can uplight these guys and have them with different colored booths, especially if we end up making this like an indoor structure structure much the same as we do in this storage system the lighting effects are really going to start to shine through once there isn't any sunlight interfering and that's going to make these guys look really really cool illuminated by these we might want to do some stuff like this in future if we do like a, a cyberpunk town build or something like that that i've been suggesting we might do in the future of this series having them walking around in the windows of structures lit like this is going to make it feel like they're all at some kind of rave i guess but we're going to put another bucket of water in there with him just to make sure he can bob up and down it's going to still have him kind of facing towards the back wall there but we can still trade with him so uh yeah it's gonna look a little bit glitchy but it's gonna work just fine and after a couple more nights of attempts and a couple more villages cured actually i now have a toolsmith working in there but i managed to kind of individually trap two zombie villagers that spawned over there in the same kind of mob cluster they kind of pack spawned over there and so i'm thinking we can grab another golden apple out of here splash both of them with a weakness potion and once they are both cured i'm gonna start to make did that did that even hit either of them nope i just splashed myself with a weakness potion i'm still working out projectiles in bedrock edition there we go that should hit both of them and with these two I should be able to start a kind of rudimentary villager breeding cell. Now, we're not really looking to make like an infinite villager breeder or anything. I just want to create a decent handful of villagers here, thanks to probably just assembling a bunch of beds in a location and waiting for them to breed up. I've got enough crop farms in the local area that I can throw them some food. Hopefully, at that point, they should start to breed some baby villagers, and from there, we can look into just zombifying villagers as we have them instead of curing a naturally spawned zombie villager every single time. But the sun is rising on the horizon and despite the fact that these two are quite clearly in the rays of the RTX sun, this is of course all dictated by skylight from regular Minecraft, so the fact that the sun is hitting them full in the face at this point isn't going to matter at all and sooner or later they should transform back into regular villagers now of course what i really want from these in the long run is a couple that we can get some decent emeralds from and then the blacksmith professions we already have as i mentioned a toolsmith over there i'm after a an armorer and a weaponsmith so that we can trade diamond tools with them on a more regular basis and now that we have a mending trader in there oh there we go we've got our two villagers they're back in the boats wonderful we should be able to deal with those in a second but yeah once we've got a few more trades in here maybe a couple more librarians for books i think we're going to just have everything we want at our fingertips thanks to some good villager trades so right now we have a fisherman and a shepherd i presume because of <laughs> hello somebody appears to have moved into my house <laughs> that's a little bit confusing but yeah i think there are enough barrels and looms and stuff in there that they've just picked up on whatever workstations are around and it looks like there are enough villagers here that they've actually started spawning cats that's kind of delightful actually might adopt one of those if it doesn't just go through to the nether i guess all right let's get these two contained inside an area where hopefully with a few beds around they should be able to start breeding okay got myself a little villager breeding area set up here we've got a few beds that we can chuck in and you'll notice that every time they pair with the beds they have the opportunity to change their profession these two have been back and forth a little bit let me get the shield out of the way they've been back and forth between fishermen and shepherds and a variety of things thanks to the workstations we have around here i'm surprised none of them have seen the composter over there that's turning them into a farmer but there you go we've got a couple of shepherds now where once there was a fisherman now let's see we've got a couple more beds in here and i've got one more over there that i was sleeping in outside of the storage area we've probably got enough wool to make a few more once we uh, shear some of these sheep and if we fill this area up with beds, then hopefully we should be able to breed up a couple more villagers. Of course, the next ingredient after that is food, and we can chuck them some bread from the wheat field here. I can't remember if I ever picked up any carrots or potatoes from anywhere that we've been, but I expect we could go to the next village over, just over that way, if we wanted to find some more carrots. Either way, the wheat field gave us a decent amount of bread. Let's drop in and see, yes, a fisherman and a shepherd one more time, and hopefully just dropping a few loaves of bread to each of them should be enough that they will start breeding. 
Oh, and that didn't take very much time at all. We just saw some heart particles there. We'll probably give them a bit of privacy because they tend to be distracted by us hanging around. But yep, looks like <laughs> looks like some breeding is happening in there. And I just heard the small villager voice. Yep, there we go. We've got another baby villager. Fantastic. So it looks like this little breeding cell is going to work fine for our purposes for now. And then maybe we'll be able to drag them out of here somehow. I'm not quite sure if we can get them through the corners here with a boat or a minecart or if we just need to open it up with a fence gate or a door or something like that that we can allow the villagers out one at a time. But, well, they seem pretty content to breed some more, so I guess I'll leave them to it. Sometime later, I'm actually stealing villagers out of the corner of this little breeding cell now. We have three baby villagers waiting to grow up, and this guy here in the boat, the fisherman at the front, is one of the zombie villagers that we cured originally. So I can now convert him into, I think, either a weaponsmith or an armorer, and he'll go nicely with our toolsmith in the little rainbow houses I have set up for them. This one at the back here, unfortunately, is not... A, uh, a a cured zombie yet, so we're probably going to have to keep you separate from this guy at the front here, but hopefully we should be able to throw down a couple of workstations out here, have them pathfind to those, they'll split up, and then that way I should be able to get this one back into the villager breeding pen, or maybe keep him separate and have him zombify overnight. So let me, uh, let me break out this boat here, let me have another boat ready, and oh, oh, maybe, maybe you should have gone for the front there. There we go. All right, so our discount villager, I think, is this one here. Yep, he's he's just hanging out here, and unfortunately, the guy I tapped is also the guy that we're going to end up zombifying, so hopefully he won't feel too bad about that, and hopefully he's not going to gossip about me to his fellow villagers. In the meantime, though, oh, it <laughs> looks like they're hopping over the wall to see what happened. I'm going to row this guy over to the area with the trading stations, put down the blast furnace in front of him, and hopefully he'll unpair from the barrels and pair to his new workstation, the blast furnace. So I think one of the biggest problems with this was that I had so many workstations around here, and every time I put down a workstation here, it would end up being claimed by one of the other villagers over there. So you really want to have these guys separate when you start to switch around their professions, which is going to make it harder and harder, I think, to fill out these with the professions that we want. However, we got this guy to become an armorer who was the other zombie villager that we ended up curing last night. So we do actually have an armorer villager on the go now. I've locked him in with one trade, and that is how things work on Bedrock now. So hopefully that should be all good. If we break his workstation, he is going to stay as an armorer, and we can move him in to one of the spots down here. I'm thinking the armorer is probably going to go in the dark blue. We've got cyan, light blue, and dark blue there representing the ones who are going to be trading us all of the diamond stuff eventually. And I think the cleric is going to go in either magenta or purple, and then we'll have a butcher over here in pink. We're going to have a farmer in the yellow spot. The lime green will be taken up by something else. I'm not quite certain what. And then the full green is going to be another profession here or there. Maybe a shepherd or something like that can go in here as well. There's a bunch of different options. And frankly, I think having this amount of colors involved is going to make it a little bit easier to see which villager is which. I did update the resource pack to its latest version, but it doesn't look like that's fixed the issues I'm seeing with the villager outfits. So maybe that'll happen another time. Either way, we can move this guy into... One of the cells over here, I think, yeah, like I said, the dark blue will probably be the preferred one there. And if I just surround him with some other blocks, we'll just use sand or something like this for now. And then we'll just be able to block him off from going into any of the other cells here. And we should get him into this blue booth. So we're going to hop on down into here, take this guy out of the boat, just give him a couple of quick nudges so he ends up in the spot we want him. Let's pop down his workstation in front of him, like so. There we go, it looks like he's in there. I'm gonna put the trapdoor over there so he doesn't get attacked by baby zombies. Bucket of water in there with him as well so that he is gonna stay fixed to this workstation. And it looks like our armorer is in business. Not too shabby. I think that guy may be a fisherman forever, so I think I'll, I guess we'll have to be okay with that unless he's switching professions now. Excuse you? After all that time, now you decide to become a leather worker. I mean, really. Well, if he's still changing his professions based on the workstations that are inside the house, then maybe there is hope for him yet, because it looks like one of the other villagers just tried to pair with this grindstone and was unsuccessful, or maybe just can't pathfind to it, hence the thundercloud particles, so maybe if we give them time, this leather worker is going to attach to the grindstone here and we can use him 
as our toolsmith, because those are the ones I want the discounts from probably the most out of everybody. A cheap diamond tools is definitely going to be a good thing. And this guy now is trading us a efficiency two diamond pickaxe for six emeralds and a diamond shovel for one, which ain't too bad. So if we can get the same deals out of armorers and weaponsmiths, then we'll be set for diamond gear for a while. This guy, however, grew up to be a nitwit, so there's not a whole lot we can do with him. I don't think we'll even be able to zombify him and turn him back into something else. I think the nitwit is here for life, but you never know, we could give that a try, and <laughs> in the meantime, maybe he could be the zombie villager that we use to zombify all of the others. We'll see. But it looks like they are shifting their professions around, so I wonder if this guy... Oh, it looks like he might have decided to become a weaponsmith. Nope, still a leather worker. I can't tell their uniforms from the back. It's always a little easier to see from the front. Honestly, though, with the cow farming operation I've got going on, having a leather worker around with a single leather per emerald traded would not be too bad. It's just they don't really have any trades which are worthwhile further down the line. At long last, my work here is done. And behold, <laughs> we have a pretty well color-coordinated setup with 12 of the villager professions. Now, there are, I believe... 13 villager professions the one we are missing from this lineup is a shepherd with a loom block but i don't really use shepherds all that much they tend to trade white wool for emeralds and they'll trade you other colors of wool back it's not all that exciting as far as trades go but these guys are basically the gamut of professions aside from shepherds and they fit quite neatly into the 12 colors of of Minecraft glass except for the grayscales which of course look mostly the same just different like intensities of white or over here we have the brown villager who I added onto the uh, the side of the the red one here because there wasn't really space for him in the rest of the spectrum he probably could have gone next to orange but that's the fisherman so he's now getting to the point where he's trading campfires which is actually quite an interesting trade he's buying coal from me pretty cheap which is good and we could of course make any of these trades a little bit cheaper for ourselves that aren't you know one item per emerald but I think largely speaking we're getting good deals out of most of these and apparently you can set up pretty easy raid farms in bedrock so that's something i can look into later the librarian here obviously doesn't have the best books in the world aside from mending but he will trade us glass which is a very valuable trade and even if i can't see the glass blocks i'm pretty sure he's not selling me the emperor's new clothes uh right here is the fletcher who we've seen from the beginning of this video we have a farmer in here now who is trading me pumpkins which are very easy to farm here and i've been farming them basically since this world began so that's a good trade and of course later on we can get a bit of food from him I've already been bu buying some cookies to level him up. We get cakes, suspicious stew, and golden carrots, which aren't as useful in Bedrock as they are in Java, but are still pretty decent. The leather worker here I haven't explored much, just got some easy leather trades thanks to the cow farm. The cartographer is potentially going to unlock a chance to go and visit more ocean monuments or woodland mansions. Also a pretty easy glass pane trade back from the librarian's glass trade, meaning we can double down on some of our emeralds from that. And of course, the toolsmith we already know. The weaponsmith here, we are slowly leveling up to get him to diamond sword and axe level. And then we also have an armorer here who I'm slowly working my way through leveling up as well. Using his blast furnace to smelt up some iron so that we can get ourselves some easy trades from level 2 through level 3. Potentially a little higher. And there we go, we're starting to get diamond armor trades from him as well, which is fantastic. The stonemason, only one clay ball per emerald, pretty good. And obviously some quartz trades further down the line. The cleric here could be cured multiple times to get a better rotten flesh trade, but the fact that he can trade us redstone straight off the bat is very nice, and we can get some easy lapis from him as well. Might be able to trade in some gold if we can get a gold farm going later, and... Last but not least, the Butcher. The Butcher's trades are quite useful because he's going to sell some food that will be better than the food the farmer can trade us in Bedrock Edition. Some of these guys can actually end up trading you cooked steak without you having to provide the raw steak yourself. So that's actually turning into quite a useful villager to have around, despite the fact that I don't normally mess with Butcher's. And I believe they have a sweet berry trade, which can get very, very handy for acquiring some emeralds later on. Almost as good, if not better, than the Fletcher's stick trade, providing that the Fletcher is down to one stick per emerald. But I think this is all looking pretty good, and I like 
the color coordination of the entire thing. We're going to wait until it gets a little bit darker so you can see the full effect at night time before we wrap up this episode. But I'm thinking maybe we'll end up putting a building around this entire thing. So like the storage system, we can see it at all times of day with a roof over the entire thing to block out the natural daylight of the scene. And there we go, with the sun going down, this place really starts to come alive. You can see the colours so much more clearly once the sun dips below the horizon. <laughs> the librarian in particular <laughs> is looking really quite cool, and the rest of them you can start to see how the different colours affect their skins as well. Oh, we got that nighttime reset here, and I'll have to go to bed shortly to make sure that some stuff doesn't start coming out of the woodwork to attack me in just a second, but at least we got plenty of village cats spawning around here, which are probably doing their part to keep the creepers away. But I like this little setup and I think maybe we can expand it in future to include more librarians and this color coding system is something that I will keep into future builds as well so we can make sure that we know just based on the color which villager we're talking to. I think they turned out pretty well in the end and hopefully you folks enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Minecraft RTX Survival. My name has been Pixorifs. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. <laughs> Bye for now.